Clock will call meeting the order. Uh, roll call. We have all board members, including our two student representatives present. Um, and then look, addition to the agenda, looks like we did have a couple additions to the agenda. Yep. You know, would you describe those? Yep, absolutely. Um, one of the additions, there was, uh, we did find a, an error in the um, in the revised budget, so I added an, a revised, an updated revised budget, and I'll walk through that in a couple of minutes. Um, and then um, on the minutes from uh, February 8th, I omitted that um, the board did your share out of the MSBA uh, sessions that you had gone to, so I just added that into the minutes um, on February 8th. So those are the additions. Sounds good. Um, is that looking for approval agenda? Move to approve the agenda. A motion from Cheryl, a second from Bruce. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Okay. Aye. Opposed say no. Carried. Public comment. Um, we do have a few uh, people here that uh, have turned in paperwork for public comment. I do just want to kind of review um, uh, board policy and well as what's kind of posted on our website, just so everybody's aware. Um, just kind of reading down the list here. All participants will be held to the following guidelines and standards. Remarks should be addressed to the board as a whole. Um, even when communicating difficult issues, it's important to remain respectful and dignified in our common uh, communication. A five minute time limit is established for each participant in the event that multiple people wish to address the board on the same topic. The board will ask the group to identify one person that will speak on behalf of all participants. A maximum of 20 minutes will be available for public comment portion of the school board meeting. Uh, in general, the board will not respond to the information received during public comment. In order to communicate in an effective manner, please keep public communication to two or three main points and articulate those points as directly and clearly as possible. Lastly, the superintendent will follow up with all participants of public comment. Um, and then reviewing the public comment forms, it, it appears as though all four forms that were turned in are in regards to the same uh, same topic um, based on our policy and kind of have, as discussed, um, I'll just make a quick question and comment. Is there one person that you guys would like to stand as a representative for this public public comment? But how do you do that when everybody has different points? Uh, it, it, the... Well, I, and I'm only just reading off because it's almost verbatim the same words on the public comment form. So uh, that's just kind of how how we have it listed. It's been policy for years. It's been posted on our, our website. So that's the only reason I make these comments right now, just to put that out. Because there's four forms, and I, we do have a five minute time limit uh, per person, 20 minutes total. Um, you know, I. I guess I'll speak for the rest of the board. I'll be okay with that, um, but we do just want to ensure that we keep that that five minute time limit, and then it'll be a twenty minute time overall. Is that sound sufficient to everybody else? Anybody else have any concerns or questions on that? You mean then we can all speak as long as it's not over twenty minutes? As long as it's not over five minutes per person. Yep, oh, twenty yeah, minutes that's overall. That's fine. My comment will only take about. Well, yeah, that's fine. We'll get to your comment. Um, what I'll do is I'll just go on the, the order that they were handed to me. Um, Kim uh, Gilbert, Gilbertson, I apologize if I pronounced your last name wrong, but okay. go ahead and speak to the board. Do I stand in a circle? Uh, you can come over right here. Okay. All right. Well, um, good evening. Uh, I understand now that I can't, I have to be very general. And so I went through and crossed off a few things that I thought. Maybe that was too specific, so if I'm not going to use any names, but if something I'm about to say doesn't seem right, please just let me know. Um, just in full disclosure, in June of 2021, I retired after 42 years of teaching. 36 of those were here. Um, certainly, um, it's hard to separate myself from being a teacher to being just someone in the public, because I'll always be a teacher in my heart, but... Um, tonight, I am going to speak as, you know, a member of the community here and someone who lives in District um, 741. So I just would like to pose a rhetorical question to the school board. Are you somewhere on the continuum of being confused or frustrated or angry that this grievance has landed in your lap? And I would be <laughs> if I were you. Um, it is my opinion that it should have been resolved by removing the directives at level one or level two. That it was not is worrisome to me, and I hope the board recognizes that as a problem. But now you do have an important decision that faces you. 
When something emotional or critical faces me, I find myself thinking in sign language because I use sign language nearly every day for 23 years, so it's part of my thought process. So I started thinking justice. This is the sign for justice because you can see the scales of justice going back and forth as you weigh both sides of the issue. And so I'm asking you to, to please do that, to give equal weight to everything that you see, to be fair and open-minded. You have a lot of documents that you were given um, on the 10th, and I'm hesitant to say some specific things I had planned to about that in case I would be overstepping. But this is a significant moment for our school district. You became the guardrails when the grievance process reached level three. That's, that's a huge job and guardrails can get dinged and crashed into. And um, I, I mentioned in the emails that I sent to each of you too that you know I appreciate that you serve on a school board. Um, kind of one of the basics in our republic or our democracy is having a school board. But now you also as guardrails have the expectation is that you will prevent further damage. Ethics, compassion, and justice are at stake. Um, because I've worked in third grade rooms nearly every day during the 2019-2021 school years, I feel like I would be able to refute many statements in the directive just on my own experience. I know about those teachers teaching skills, classroom organization, knowledge of third grade standards and curriculum, and the professional conduct. And you have documentation of that. And so while there's that saying, justice is blind, it really can't be blind to the facts that you have been given. Um, the lesson plan requirement is probably one of the most egregious to me. Um, to someone who is a who is not a teacher, it's probably confusing to have read some of the claims, but it is untrue that this teacher didn't plan more than one day in advance. And while I have some specifics, like I said, I am uh, cautious to share those because I don't want to overstep my bounds. Um, I feel like if you could see this person's classroom. A little neon sign would what would light up that says conscientious teacher. Um, to say a teacher left without permission during a medical emergency, I'm kind of speechless. I have to explain that in depth. I am confused. Um, I better not say that. <laughs> I think I'm going to go to uh, this point about the directives in general and say that they intentionally inflict emotional distress and I wish I could highlight those words as they come out of my mouth. About 30 seconds left. Pardon? About 30 seconds. Okay. I, I have five words <laughs> that I want to close with but I do want to separate them completely from the <clears throat> event in 1968 that made them famous. Okay, I'm not comparing that event with what's happening here now. You'll understand when I get to my last five, five words. Okay, I'm going to use them because of the reason that people stated them was because it was a watershed moment. So that could be any watershed moment when people are hopeful that the right decision will be made. So in, in that light, I say, as you make your decision regarding this issue, please make it as if the whole world is watching. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Carrie Schaefer. <clears throat> okay. Um, good evening. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Carrie Schaefer. I was born and raised here in Painesville. Attended all my school years here in Painesville. I'm married and have three kids that are in the elementary school. Um, ever since my oldest was in kindergarten, I have volunteered in their classrooms, other than COVID. So I've watched the teachers in our school district firsthand seeing what they do, giving it their all each and every day. And I was proud to be a Bulldog. However, there have been some recent events that have happened in our school district that are very disturbing and should scare all of us. And I will mention that no one has asked me to speak, um, but I'm disgusted and I pray that you will listen to what I have to say. So my middle child is in third grade in Mrs. Maher's class. I have watched a teacher literally be beat down by our administrators and in turn 
it's affecting her. How do you expect someone to perform at their best when they're being scrutinized by every decision they make? How is she supposed to teach our kids when she's being bullied by our administrators? And yes, she's being bullied. We have the big three that are being taught to our children and the seven mindsets, but clearly that only applies to kids. It's not being applied to our principal or superintendent. A teacher should never have to question whether or not a child should get more attention on a subject because they need it at that moment to, or stay on task to complete that lesson plan for the day. I am not a teacher, however, I am a youth director at our local church and I plan lessons each week. And there are many weeks where I don't get to everything I have planned because we get into a discussion, the kids are rambunctious, they don't understand something. That's just life and that's common sense. Um, and what kind of directive doesn't have an end date? I've never heard of something that can just go on until somebody says so. Um, there are just so many flaws in this timeline of events. And at the second grievance, the superintendent should not be taking Mrs. Holmberg's word, but she should be going so and talking I'm to those just teachers. I'm going to you right now that you're kind of getting into a personal grievance, personnel grievance matter. Okay. I'm just saying she needs to do her due diligence. And I'll move on. I hope you all understand this is ab absolutely affecting our children. She can't do her job to the fullest situation, and that's in turn affecting our kids' learning. It's affecting my child and every child in third grade. And I would also want you to think, if I had a kid with mental health crisis in school, I have zero faith and confidence in how the administration would handle that. Um, and they have proven they don't understand mental health, and so I've lost respect. Um, cautious on, on some of your accusations. Okay. But let's for a second take out all rules and politics and simply think of Mrs. Maher as a human. I would like to ask, what have we done to ask her, what can we do to ensure her success? Have you offered to help? Have you ever asked her how she's doing? And the truth is no. We need to show compassion in this instance. Um, and to the school board, I know you guys are voted by this community and I know this is a hard job and I don't wanna make your job harder but I want you to look at this from a human standpoint, from somebody like, what can you do to make this better? I think we're at a crossroads here and we can't just take someone's word. We need to do our due diligence to make this better. And the way the last meeting was run and letting that, it just, it's, it's wrong. And I will say a true leader is an advocate for their staff and leads by example. And finally, I want you to know I stand behind Mrs. Maher and every one of the teachers in this school district. If we start losing these teachers, what are our children left with? It's very apparent that the morale at the school is not good right now. So what are we gonna do, do to ensure our students and our kids have the best education and that our staff are being treated with respect and dignity? It's time for all of you to step up to the plate and do the right thing. Ask questions, listen to doctors, show compassion, and look at your administrators and get back to where it needs to be. I want to be proud to be a Bulldog again. I want to be thankful I'm raising my kids here. I will always stand up for right, what's right, and I will help in any way I can, including continuing to volunteer in our schools to help our teachers. I hope you serious, take a serious look at these issues and we don't just sweep any of it under the rug. Thank you. Uh, Don Tremel. Oh, good evening. I did graduate from this school, so you can kind of set the tone a little bit to understand how I must feel after being happy that my daughter, you know, got to teach in this my home school, and you know, and then have this happening. I can't even. There is absolutely no words that I can begin to tell you how, how I feel. Anyways, I'll start with what I have. Probably two minutes it'll take. We wish to thank the staff, community, family, and friends for the outpouring support for teacher Tammy Maher and her family during this time as it has meant the world to all of us. And we know you are shining great people that we know exist in the Painesville School and community. No words can express our gratitude. You have been carrying her for months and giving her strength and courage. You will never know how much it has helped us so far. We wish to thank uh, Brooke and Bill for their assistance in their medical emergency and any other staff present in that moment. I want to thank them. I got a call, my husband I want to thank. 
I got a call from her father, Mark, as he was at the home that day that uh, she was brought home, helping Corey, and she was brought home, and I got a call from him, and I got there as fast as I could. As the last first time it happened, she went directly to the ER, and we didn't get to see her until she was released from her hospital stay, and that was extremely difficult on all of us. When I arrived, Corey informed me that he had contacted the hospital and was waiting for a call back to see whether she would again need to be come to the ER. And at no time were we thinking of anything else except her health. That's all we were thinking about was her health. She didn't contact me first the time personally or the second time, and I'm her mother. When she was released from FMLA and could return to administration, uh, and, and continue to work, administration wanted a meeting with her, and at no time in that meeting did they tell her when she... Just caution details within the grievance process you can speak of. Okay, no time was she told she would be having added duties or different than anyone else's. Um, and she was had different restrictions than others. And I find that appalling. We find that appalling. And that nothing was discussed in that meeting about it. So on February 10th, she came to contest this, and she was interrupted multiple times and wasn't able to speak on her own ordeal. And I hope you saw who she really was during those moments, as she was kind, respectful, extremely stoic, while she again endured a difficult moment. She wasn't the spectacle. I think that was plain to see. Thank you. Thank you. And then Mark Schrommel. Yes, I'm Mark Schrommel, the very, very proud father of Tammy Parker. There is so much evil in this world. Please, please, do not allow it to prevail on the Painesville School Administration. Please. And thank you everybody for the public comments. Um, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Uh, Janelle, I'll move to you. Sure. Um, attached are the January 25th, February 8th, and February 10th um, minutes. Um, Cheryl, do you want to go over the bills before I go into the personnel? Um, I went through the bills. I have a couple of questions for Steve. Other than that, it was all business as usual. Sounds good. As you look at the personnel items, you'll see Brenda Evans. She is filling uh, one of our food service um, our food service openings. Uh, Bev Weedy has um, resigned her position. She found an opportunity also in town, a little less demanding, which was a good opportunity for her. And then our preschool teachers have the second term of their contract. So those are the uh, personnel items that are on the consent agenda. So I'm looking for a motion to approve consent agenda as presented. So moved. And a motion from Bruce. Second. Second from Rick. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Carried. Uh, communication items. Back to you, Joe. All right. So I have a relatively short um, administrative report today, but I, I do want to um, just take a second to call out what is sitting in front of you, board members. Um, and then I will draw your attention to the screen for a student presentation.
So our students, um, they they decided to. We kind of turned this over to them and said, um, "We're missing a name plaque. Let's do something for our board and give them an opportunity to to see the work that you all do in the innovation center." Um, I tried really hard to get them to come and present, and this was the compromise. So they they preferred to do a little video. So. On the back of your plaques, there are um, there is a reference to the way in which it was made and how um, the year that it was made as well. So, uh, thank you, school board, for your service to our community. I didn't quite get their name, so can we get? Or can I get Absolutely. one name? For, yes, okay. I for sure will send that to you. Yep. And that's what I have for my administrative report. You'll connect the names with all of us, yeah. won't you? I will absolutely. Okay, appreciate yep. that. Yep, for sure. Uh, committee organization reports. Is there any uh, committee meetings recently that uh, need to be discussed? Our policy discussing that uh, the first read later. So, yep. I think I had any committee meetings myself. It was kind of a, a lighter month here in February. So, yep, correct. Um, student representatives. Um, well, as we all know, uh, hockey girls are going to state, which is exciting. And then the boys are going to sectionals. And for SAD, we have been going to elementary school. We're trying to get each grade before the year runs out. And I know in in March, we're going to be going to second graders. Um, and we just had a potluck for the whole group because we like to do things with each other. And student council, we haven't been doing as much. We just had that big dance, so we kind of regrouping after that. Right, yeah. So for band, we have our small group and ensemble contest on the 28th. And then NHS, we kind of have a lot. We hit the ground running with our new members. They were a little overwhelmed. Um, so for I Love to Read Month, we've been shipping over to help read to students. We have more coming up this week. Um, let's see what else do we do. Bake sale. Bake sale. We raised bake sale. And I think Mary Holmberg touched on it last time, but we are raising money to buy board games and books and just to give them out to our elementary scores. We're also taking donations if you'd like. We can drop off stop space in our high school office. Boards, board games, books, flashcards, anything you have that you don't need. And we're just gonna give them out to students. It was supposed to be today for conferences, but that was moved online, unfortunately. But we're gonna find another time to hand them out to students. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions for the student representatives? Put them on. Have a Good attendance at the um, dance, what even though yeah, a lot of people had fun. Uh, yeah. There was a dance, like music and stuff, but there were so many games that there's teams going on everywhere. Everyone was playing, but it was really fun. Thank you. Looks like we had nothing for old business. We move on to new business. Uh, 2021, 2022 uh, budget. Yep. So last, um, at, at our last uh, business meeting, I had talked in work session, sorry, we had talked about kind of preliminary, preliminarily where things are at within the budget. Um, so I did um, attach the revised budget for you. Um, you will see, I'm going to make this quite a bit better. Um, you will see that um, our, our overall um, annual budget dollar is not as significant in the deficit spending as we had budgeted and planned so far. A couple of things just to remind you about the assumptions that we made is we did have a, a food service fund balance that we were able to offset some of the cost of the electrical bill, um, the cleaning costs, some of those things that are, um, that are eligible with the food service money because we did have a fund balance and we had reached a point where um, the uh, Department of Ed was notifying us that that money needed to be spent down. So um, so that is one of the, the, the areas of contribution as well. Um, but otherwise, I will entertain any questions that any of you have about the budget specifically. So and this will be our last review of the budget until we get to May, June, right? Yes, correct. Yep. So this is the, the document that is um, that is being used again to target forward for um, the next agenda item, which is going to be the, the suggested reductions um, for the 22-23 budget. So 
Looking for a motion to approve the revised 21-22 budget as presented. So move. We have a motion from Bruce. Second. So, Megan. Megan. Uh, Megan with a second. Any further discussions? For the questions. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Both say no. Yeah. Carried. 21-22 budget update. Um, so the this one is really going to be um, just the, the ongoing discussion last um, at the work session we also talked about a kind of a target for reductions and preliminarily we um, identified uh, $200,000 as a targeted reduction. Um, this document is updated um, to reflect the, um, the revised budget dollar on that second column that's highlighted right there. So again if um, uh, what we had preliminarily talked about was $200,000, so I would entertain any further discussion about a different direction or I'll look to the board for a uh, direction as we move forward with budgeting for the 22-23 school year. Consistent so, with what we've talked about. I mean, and yeah, and at this point in time, we're basically just looking for a, a motion um, for approval of budget reduction target amount. Correct. Correct. Yep. So uh, then, what's our target amount uh, as listed? As as this is a, this is tentative till we actually get the final budget. Correct. Right. Anyway, so we're in the middle of it. And we're trying to figure out if it's going to work. Yep. So my yeah, so we don't have a final budget. In in looking at the history of um, kind of the way that this has gone in the past, this would be really kind of setting the target for administration to propose a budget for next year with a and that's where that use that two hundred thousand dollars. Okay. If I add this in a motion, I'll make a motion that you use this as um, a guide to the sure. the reduction. Okay. Second. Uh, motion, Bruce. Uh, <laughs> For a target of 147.916, as tentatively listed. Um, actually, it would be um, on the on the document. It actually it is um, a reduction proposal of two hundred thousand dollars. Two hundred thousand dollars. Yep. Oh, I got to see there. Yep. All right. So two hundred thousand uh, dollars. Motion second from uh, Rick. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Both say no. Carried. Uh, C, district survey for referendum. All right, so uh, I reached out to um, a couple of different firms that have done um, surveys for districts in planning for their referendums. Um, you'll notice the first, uh, the first uh, company here you'll recognize, School Perceptions Survey. Uh, School Perceptions is the um, survey firm that the district engaged in 2019 to, um, actually it was a little before that, but it, it was to drive the 2019 um, building facility project. And you'll notice that they, um, so this is probably a very, very familiar document to you, um, but kind of the, the overarching, I guess, what's the big, what's the cost, what's it gonna be um, discussion, really is on um, page five of seven. So if you take a look at the way that they've kind of broken it out, as a reminder, the school perception survey is a physical document that is mailed to every resident within um, the school district. So uh, that is that is their style. It's a little bit different style than the other one that we're going to talk about in just a minute or two. But um, this, so the base cost of this survey is about eighty-one hundred dollars. And then what happens is then you add on some additional costs for mailings. Um, when we do a mailing or um, at election time to all eligible voters within the school district, it's right around $2,000. So it's something to be aware of uh, with those costs as well. And then you'll notice the optional services of engagement. So for example, if they come out and do a presentation to the board, it's $1,100 per visit. So there's some additional, it's a little bit more of an a la carte type menu when you look at this contract. I think the biggest thing to kind of be aware of is um, this is a different type of, of survey. It is, it is a paper survey. Um, typically it's about 60 questions um, and then it is brought back and then 
the depth of analysis we can dig into with them about how much we want them to analyze and drive our information forward. Okay, so that's um, the, the estimate and the quote that came from school perceptions. Can I ask a question about that? Mm -hmm. Was there, I thought that they could also answer the questions online with a code. Yes. Do you know, is that part as, as an option? Does anybody recall that from the last? Mm -hmm. so, so. Yeah. I don't know. That's how I filled mine out. <laughs> right. So, I, I mean, I think it we. It says can... launch electric, electronic. Okay. electronic survey. Sure. So, what's yeah. a combination of? Yeah, generate oh. unique, oh. unique survey access code or kiosk codes. And that's under the phase three. Sure. Do we have any recollection of what percent we got back? Oh. A long time <laughs> I think that is actually in the survey. It says how many respondents, and it broke it down by yeah, but, type. Uh, what I don't remember, but it, we, we do have that information because yeah. I think they broke it down by was it by district employee, you know, parents. I forget the the constituent types that it broke it down to, sure. but that's a good point. We should look at that to see what their response rate was. I sure. think I remember them saying it was a. A positive response yeah. rate, yeah. Well, they but I don't recall far more than right. most of the rest of them may take. So the only thing we have is from them that our, our response was really pretty decent. Right. Sure. Um, and I can certainly follow up with them uh, with the kind of again, and I'll look back into the documents that that they completed and presented to the board last time, so that I can have a point of reference for you if it, just to as a reassurance if. Um, you would like that information before making a decision. I certainly can can gather that as well. Um, the other the other one to kind of take a look at is the Morris Leatherman Company. Um, that this firm is a little is a different process. Um, this process is um, a series of approximately 400 phone calls um, through random generated. Um, so it would be a random sampling of our district. It would not hit every. Um, individual within the district um, and it's done in essentially two phases so you have and and there's four kind of topic areas your general perceptions and atmospherics the possible operating and capital levies communications and demographics so this their process is a little bit different their um, the the next page of the document walks through kind of their um, their history of, of how they have the trained people making the phone calls and um, asking the questions in such a way so that it doesn't el elicit a response that's one way or the other. Um, and then kind of walks through um, the schedule of how that, um, how that survey would be um, deployed. Their project costs um, are all inclusive at $16,000 uh, for 400 households. That 400 households is um, uh, what they recommended based on our student our student population size, um, and then you would you see that um, there would be an additional cost for additional questions as well. This is also about 60 questions. So um, again, the if there would be additions to that survey based on the um, what we are hoping to hear or see, then we would there would be additional costs. <coughs> Uh, some districts that have I've seen um, use this, um, Anoka Hennepin is a large district that I've seen often this information by school as their, so that was one of the websites that I, I went in and looked at. Very similar, a slideshow presentation of the data, um, but I, they were not, um, I asked for a couple of samples, um, but they were a little hesitant to, to provide a, because of client data, but. Those are the two firms that um, that I had a communication with. I think again the the methodology is different in the way that the surveys are administered. I think there's there's some benefit in using a process that our community is familiar with. That might be with the school perceptions, um, knowing that that is something our community has experienced in the past. There might be. That does carry some benefit in my mind as well. And I, I think it's important that it reaches all constituents. Mm -hmm. that's, 400 that's has me concerned number. that it's a. I want to say we received more than 400 responses from our school. That isn't, the, you know, that's the way they do surveys anyway. 
here. Right. <laughs> but my concern is phones this day. Yeah. That's what yeah. I, was yeah. say. I don't know what most that. people call me on some survey, anyways. I mean, and I know. They answer 60 questions over the phone. I know. Like, we're, this will only take 15 minutes. Waited, I'm sorry, sorry but age yeah. group. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Unless they've got cell phone numbers. It was a spam call. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, uh, I like the school perceptions. Right. Send around a piece of paper. People liked it last time. Mm -hmm. Because uh, they did ask them in the survey how they wanted to be, what they liked for communication. I think that was the highest rated. Yeah. Are there any mm -hmm. questions that you would like me to find out before um, that you would need to make an educated decision about the school perception survey? I think uh, myself, speaking for myself, but you know, yeah, we used them last time. It was we got good results. They were easy to work with. They they provided a great presentation when it was all said and done. They really were able to kind of help steer and direct the, you know that communication from mm -hmm. the public to the board and, and really give us sound advice for moving forward. And then again, I, I'm just concerned on on saying, oh, we're just going to randomly select like 400 households sure. and right. and have them answer 60 question. The sixty question questionnaire over the phone when you know likely they're going to get hung up on anyway. So um, and so I guess and we leaned heavily on that information to inform what we were going to do. Correct. We looked at yeah. that and said it drove everything. Yep. And so I think it's I think it's important that everyone has a voice. And I like I mean it was really clear how they came back. It was easy to see. It was yep. it wasn't like confusing data that was like oh, I'm not sure what this means. I came back very very clear. Here's what the responses are. Um, yep. And by I think they all, there's also like to have the comments and suggestions. Um, yep. And one of the, that's one of those add on kind of pieces that you're able to, they will, um, and I think that is important to have somebody uh, externally um, disaggregate those comments and kind of look for themes. Um, the other piece that, that school perceptions does, and, and this is really one of their um, areas of, of kind of what they're focusing on is that, um, it really is about educating the, the community on the needs of the district because that's part of how that survey is framed. So it's another opportunity for us to um, to communicate why we're asking some of the questions we're asking, what what the needs of the district are, and why they are what they are. So um, it does it does provide it's kind of a three prong purpose: is to educate, gather data, and then understand what I guess what the tax tolerance is. If some of the questions are similar, um, <laughs> would we do a comparison? Because I know there was a few that were like overall feedback. I wonder if there'd be value in us asking some of those same questions mm -hmm. or not. I mean, it is a different, I, we're asking for different I think things. Once we, but, once we agree to go into a uh, contract with right. them, that'll be a, the, the opportunity. That's we'll have that conversation with them to, to clarify that. Um, I think we're at the point of just looking for a motion to engage a contract with school processors. I got a motion from Bruce. I'll second. Second from Cheryl. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Carried. Uh, D, pay equity report. Okay, so every three years uh, we are required to submit a pay equity report and you'll see the pay equity report attached. It really is a, um, so this is, this is an area where, um, actually this came up at the board meeting last um, at, at our, um, uh, work session about one of the the sessions that a couple of you had attended um, is a pay equity uh, study. So this is kind of the ultimate end game result of um, of a pay equity study because we are required to to submit a pay equity um, plan and make sure that we are in compliance. Really, the the gist of it is this back page that has a, a summary report of our employee groups your highs, the, the um, maximum salary, the minimum salary, and the number of years that it takes to reach the minimum and the maximum. And this really is an analysis of, um, it's, uh, it analyzes gender and um, whether you have um, a, a, dominant, a group of employees that is primarily dominated by females um, and the rate in, in which it takes them to reach the upper, um, the upper, max and then if it's comparable to a male dominated class so that's those are some of the the um, thresholds of how this data is analyzed um, by the state of minnesota so it does need to be approved by the board prior to submission and so the audit would be assessing then if i'm correct like the job points that are assigned to each 
Yes, yeah, well, that's a great and question. Evaluate it. So yep. So that's a great question. So there's so so if you would if the district were to engage in a pay equity study, uh, what that does is is there's a couple of different ranges in how that can look and what it can be. Um, some of it is just truly the analysis of the class, the points within your your organization, and that's the distribution of um, responsibility to the pay grade. Okay, so that's one piece. But then the other piece that goes along with that is really an analysis of the job description and whether the job that um, you are doing today is really what when you were hired 15, 20 years ago, let's use a, um, you know, I'll, I'll use um, the admin assistants in my office. When we were looking at um, the information for um, job descriptions, it still has things like, um, type out the board notes via a typewriter. Well, okay, so it's been a while, right? So there's a couple of different levels of analysis that can happen when you do a pay equity study, but the end result is really a presentation that would come to the district about your point values and um, how those point values are differentiated throughout the organization, and then um, those point values are assigned based on job responsibilities and duties. Um, so that's there's there's a couple of different ways that that audit or that that study could happen. Yep. Does the list of the jobs here come off a sheet from the state or something? Because when I get to looking at the admin group, mm -hmm. um, I don't see um, an athletic director. Yep. Which... So this is on. We are given one date. We are given one date to report everybody that was on payroll on that. Oh, so it doesn't make any difference what's before and after. No. Nope. Okay, that's all. I figured there was a basis for. Yeah, it. there's there's a date and time. Okay. That we are that you have that we have to pull from. Yep. Okay. And I want to say it was December. Thirty first. Right. I got gotcha. you. So for a motion to approve the pay equity report as presented, make a motion. A motion from Rick. Second. Second from Megan. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those say no, carry. Uh, policy, first read, no action. Okay, so um, don't be too overwhelmed by the list <laughs> because there are not a lot of changes. But when I met with the um, the policy committee, um, we've, we've had two separate meetings. You'll see we met on the 31st of January and also on the 16th of February. So I'll just quick um, start off by clicking on the, um, the 13th of, oh boy. Okay, so um, you're gonna see, um, I was gonna try to make this bigger when I say, oh boy, because sometimes I, I wanna open it big. Jeepers. That? Say that again, Brian. Right, click, click off the, on the other doc. There you go. I'm gonna do a right click and no. can I open it? No, if you just click on it again. Click on it again and then See the little thing in the top. Yeah. yeah. This one? No, oh, that copies the yeah, link. No, there. Just, just click on that. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs> all right. So, um, as we walk through, you're going to see highlighted um, all of the information that was really presented and any of the changes that were. Um, and, and this is a very consistent practice and model that um, the board has done with the policy committee for an, uh, the mm -hmm. last couple of years. Mm -hmm. So, um, the first one, the equal employment opportunity. Um, administrative update changes. So from Linda to Miranda, those were the only changes. So the policy committee recommended just adding those changes and suggestions to our policy. There weren't any other changes from MSBA's policy. Does that have to have a name on it? Um, I believe. No offense, Miranda. Yeah. <laughs> um, oftentimes, because oft, usually, if the if a if a policy does require a name. Um, that's when they're listed. Otherwise, yep. it's usually a position, Correct. so that that's you don't have. Curious then. Um, yep. But I could I could look at that a little bit more closely for next because if it I'll look at that again. Yeah. Okay. Um, the disability non discrimination. Um, you will see again. There's the change in um, in personnel, but then there's also an addition of legal reference. So just so that you all can can kind of see where that happens. Are the legal references are always at the very bottom of um, of the documents right here um, that are kind of incorporated or part of the meeting or part of the policy 
that's identified. Um, policy 403, discipline suspension. Um, there were, um, there are no recommended changes. So again, if there's nothing from MSBA that comes forward, then the, the policy doesn't, um, we typically don't make any changes to the policy. So there are no recommended changes in 403. Um, there are no recommended changes to 404. Um, 406, public and per private um, personnel data. Um, there were many suggested, suggested revisions. Um, as the changes are reviewed, the majority are not substantive, but procedural or semantic. So as, I'm, as I walk through this, I'll just kind of, oh, cheaper. sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll get this figured out here. There we go. Um, so as we walk through it, you'll notice um, uh, let me get it caught up here. Um, you'll notice um, let me go back to MSPA. It must be on that one. Sorry. Say again. Oh there, thank you. So these are the changes that were what that we walked through, and you'll see um, the language again. It was it's it's clarity in the language. There was nothing substantive when we walked through it that really changed the intent of the policy. Um, nor did it um, really, um, I guess, it, it, it it's all current practice. So there was it, it was clarity in the language. So those are the those are the strike throughs that are presented um, that the group felt like um, as 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 though it made sense to adopt uh, within our policy. Okay. Um, okay. Um, and then um, policy seven thirteen. We actually so we we began anal analyzing the student activities accounting. Um, and, and ultimately, the policy committee asked me to explore if there was a better policy that would be a little bit more all-encompassing. So I then went back to MSBA and had a conversation with them about um, a better, a, a, a more robust policy that would really address all donations, not just student activities. So you will see that highlighted in the next, um, the next policy meeting agenda. Okay. So coming back to, I'm gonna close all these tabs and figure out where I'm at here. Okay. Um, so then that was the, all of those were, were reviewed on the 31st of February and then on the 16th of February, oh jeepers, I'll get there. On the 16th of February, um, there are also a number that don't have sub uh, substantive changes either. So employee 407, the right to know. Um, there's a minor change that adds S to pathogens. Again, it didn't, we didn't feel as though it was a big change. So adopt that recommended change. Subpoena of school district employees, grammatical changes that were noted in MSBA's re recent red line document. Again, nothing that was substantive to alter the policy or the implications um, for the district. Um, family medical leave, uh, there are no recommended changes to the policy. Um, again, the, the policy 410 really is um, directly related to Minnesota state statute. And so unless there's a change in statute, there's often not a change in policy. Um, expense reimbursement, um, the legal references and cross-references were missing from our current policy, so we pulled that information in from MSBA. Okay. The harassment and violence, you will notice the biggest probably amount of change. Um, however, it really is not changing the intent of the, um, in the intent of the policy. It is clarifying language. So what you'll see is that um, where there used to be um, a definition of um, protected classes, it now just simply states protected class. The intention behind that, and from my understanding, is so that if there is a, a, a revised definition of protected class, we no longer have to come in and alter our policy because protected class is all encompassing, okay? Mm -hmm. 
So and most of those things are coming from the MSBA. This is absolutely thing. all MSBA yeah. recommendation. Yep, for sure. Well, protected classes. But the protect is, is like a, how would you say it? Like a statutory. Statute, right. yep. yeah. So protected class is a, is a, a, st a statutory definition. Um, and, and that's when you're, when we're talking about um, the Americans with, Di with Disabilities Act, if we're talking about um, harassment and discrimination, if we're talking about, um, you know, a, um, um, like a, a bullying um, from a, a student uh, targeting a bully because of a, or targeting a, another student because of a protected class, those are all defined in, um, in statute and through case law. So that's, that's where that comes from. But Bruce, these changes are all recommendations from MSBA. Yeah. I was on the policy committee for a long time. Yeah. And when I started, we did, I think you were on Cheryl. We had lots of changes because we didn't follow the MSBA for a while. Oh. And so we yeah. were really picking up ground to try and get on track. Right. Um, so the other the other piece that I will come down to, and and you'll notice that there's changes like as a, as another um, highlighted change is um, where um, the the protections afforded against harassment or discrimination. Um, I I believe that part of where that change comes from is is things can be discriminating without being violent, and so there was a, an expansion of the terminology to be, include discrimination, not necessarily violence. Mm -hmm. um, the other piece that I will just call out that is a little bit um, it's gotten a little bit closer to the bottom, um, and it it's in response to the change from Title IX. Um, so there was a, um, it's, it's in the investigations component here. Um, when, um, about a year and a half ago, um, the, the process that districts use and, and, and it didn't, it didn't originate from school districts. It originated at the secondary level or at secondary at high through higher ed, um, that, when a um, when there's allegations that are made against an, uh, against somebody, um, the law changed so that a person who has allegations made against them needs to be notified what they are. So that was in response to some um, sexual harassment claims that were made against um, students at a collegiate level. So that followed all of, it followed the court system, and then from there comes into policy. So that's where this changed. So you'll notice targets are victims and alleged um, perpetrators of harassment or violence. So that's that's that addition because they now there's a requirement that they're notified. Whereas in the past, um, a person who had allegations made against them maybe would not have been notified. It would be investigated without the notification for that individual. So that's one of the other key um, key changes that has is presented in that policy. Any questions on that one? Okay, and then the final one that we we talked through, and this really is where um, the policy committee kind of landed on the most appropriate um, process to drive um, acceptance of gifts and donations. So what we realized is that a lot of and, and oh, you know what? I there's a that we did have two. I'm going to stop for a moment and acknowledge because there were two donations on our agenda today that I didn't properly acknowledged. So we're going to go back to that in just a couple of minutes, if you don't mind. Um, so the, the purpose here, though, is that all donations that are made to the school district need to come through the board. And what this policy does is it's, it's broad and overarching to really suggest that, that any money that is donated to the school needs to come through the board. And if it has an intent and purpose, that's wonderful. It can have an intent and purpose, but it just has to be stated as such. Um, I did do quite a bit of research, and and many of our school many of our neighboring school districts have everything from a twenty dollar donation to the post prom account, right? So they are really robust, um, and I think that's an area that that the board may want to want to consider adopting this policy. So again, it's um, the other purpose behind that is because. Um, there might be donations that are, are made to a school district with an intent that perhaps a school district um, cannot stand behind or they cannot um, follow through with. So, for instance, 
if there would be a, a really large donation made to um, our girls' gymnastics team, like to a million dollars to build them a new, a new practice facility, well, we have to really take into consideration what can we do with that and how can we, how can we balance that out from, from an equity perspective. So there's, there's a number of reasons why this policy is in place. Um, the biggest thing, to be frank and honest with you, is it's in Minnesota State statute. Um, those two are identified right here. Um, and we did spend a little bit of time looking at those at, in the policy committee as well. Um, they're, they're very short segments of statute, but it's very clear that any money that is donated to the school does need to be adopted or accounted for through the school board. And this really outlined the process. So um, that was where we talked about um, it was more encompassing because it, then we can talk through procedures in each of our different departments on, on procedurally how does a how does a, um, a a donation get to the board so that it gets acknowledged? But those are those are internal processes that that would not have to necessarily be defined. So the state statute is listed there, mm -hmm. and when the state statute changes, that overrides ours, correct? Correct. Um, because this has been a moving target since the time we've been on. There was a time when donations came in, we couldn't really. We were in uh, responsible for them, but couldn't look at the stuff. Mm. It was ridiculous. And it came through our auditors way back oh, when they started. Sure. And it's, it's a moving target. And so when it's a moving target, if they're, as exactly. long as the state statute's in there, mm -hmm. it will move to make sure you follow the guideline. That is correct. So that's really important. Yep. Then I got another question. Okay. So were you in on this policy committee or Cheryl? Okay. Um, and I don't know who else was at them. You were at the meetings that we had at the oh, at MSBA. No, I was not. Yeah, that these guys were at the meetings at the MSBA, and I know that both of you have been to them a couple times. So I just was curious who the committee was. Yeah, yeah. So and those were some of the discussions that we had. Was that um, this was discussed at MSBA, and that there are a number of um, there. This there is a process that we that we should follow. And I would say that we do, obviously, as I recognize that we, I need to go back and acknowledge a couple of donations that were in the consent agenda, but um, there are, we do do this. Um, it's just expanding the, the, the scope in which it happens. Um, I think the other piece that, um, you know, I, I feel strongly about is if people have donated to the school, I wanna make sure that they get recognized. Now, on the flip side of that, there are people who really would like that to happen anonymously, and that is okay. It absolutely can happen. You can happen. announce that we got this donation. And it's, it's an anonymous, anonymous donation. The, the, okay. Correct. Yep. Yeah. So I think that's important just to acknowledge as well. But it's. Um, and just to clarify, where do fundraisers fall in this? Is that considered a donation? So, and fundraising is um, so a fundraiser is going to be targeted for an item. Right. It's, there, it's going to be set for a purpose. So for example, the Cherrydale fundraiser was um, generating funds for the playground. Right. So that's all part of the process. So it's not a gift, it's not a donation. Right. It's fundraised through, and I know these might, I mean, there are different, you know, there's, it's, I know we had a lot of discussion about, about kind of the nuances of that, but nothing would change from the way that our, our fundraisers that are approved fundraisers for our activities and our um, like our um, um, our playground that would not ch that would not change, but those are because those are identified in that way. Now we have received money or through donation toward the Cherrydale, for example, where people have just given extra money without buying stuff for the purpose of the playground. Then those are going to fall through and would, would mm. flow through in this way. Well, then my question would be on fundraisers. Does administration approve those or does the school board approve those? I believe currently fundraisers are approved by, via administration. Okay. Yep. Because we had a lot of conversation about what would make it charitable and not charitable. Because donation, those words, it, it's just a lot of definitions on figuring out mm -hmm. what is considered. If it's charitable, they're not getting something in return. Versus, like you said, a cherry dale, they're getting a product or, but Cheryl, you had some good, I mean, you knew a lot more about this and it's kind of opening up. We, we had a lot of 
information from the MSBA right. conference that Rick and I and, and Bruce had visited. So I just shared that with the committee. But it'll it'll be nice to um, have information on those fundraisers too. And mm -hmm. the board had discussed this earlier yes. about have, being informed on how the fundraisers progress and yep. Yep. what the results are. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But absolutely, the statutes are pretty clear about mm -hmm. donations. Yep. My biggest question was that moves, the target moves. Oh, we were in statute, on it yes. before we thought we had everything set and then it just started moving. And as long as the state statute's there, we can always refer back to that. Thank you. Any further discussion on policies? Not we'll move on to F, seniority list. Uh, the seniority list has been presented and posted, um, and we did not receive any feedback um, that it was incorrect, so it is um, there for your approval. The <coughs> motion to approve the teacher seniority list as posted. So moved. Motion from Cheryl. Second. Second from Bruce. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Carried. Review upcoming meetings. Uh, one I just wanted to highlight because uh, your board notes reminded me that we have a special meeting at 4.30 before a regular meeting at 5 o'clock in two weeks. Yes, so, with the um, intent and of the I, bond sale. I noted that it wasn't posted, uh, that the board email or board uh, calendar wasn't updated. Oh, it's but not I, on the board calendar no. yet? Okay, I, I put it on there for myself, but oh, all of a sudden, I, all of a sudden okay. I realized that I didn't I'll have make it on sure the calendar, it's on the, so yep. unless Thank I just you. didn't accept it, maybe. But. Cheryl, do you want to do those gifts? The donations? Uh, oh, yeah, the donations. Yes, yeah, you. we'll go to that before. Yep. Um, so the donations that were identified, and, and Thanks, um, they've yep. been referenced in a couple of different places or throughout um, the administrative um, updates last week. Um, but I do want to just call them out because um, one of them uh, was we received a um, a two hundred and fifty dollar donation for our um, from Roto Chopper for our robotics team. So that was really cool um, to watch our our students in the robotics build their um, their robots and and watch them like my mind doesn't work that way. So I'm intrigued to watch how this how this happens. So it's it's just awesome. So uh, thank you to Roto Chopper. Um, for the donation to our robotics team. And then also um, the Ian Peloton Fund, you may have, may have heard that a couple of different times, um, 2,400, uh, almost $2,500 for our guitar stands, um, guitars and stands. So that has been a huge draw within our connect time for the secondary where kids are learning, going and learning how to play guitar. So it's, it's really pretty amazing. And um, that is an absolute, um, we would never be able to do that without those types of donations. So a, a thank you to those, um, to those items, to those donors. So that was the last part of the consent agenda, right? It was. Is there any way we could just have that written out in we the consent couldn't. agenda? And I actually, it was up above and I missed it, to be honest with you, Bruce. It was up there and I yeah, just it was, missed it. The donations were in there and they just- they, But maybe a little more weren't. description? Yeah. yeah. If possible? Oh, sure. Sure. To write a summary. Yep, we could do that. Yeah, just, we have this from Rotor Shopper. You can go into the detail yep. a bit. And then we got this from... Yeah, uh, absolutely. No. Can do it. Yep. Do <laughs> um, uh, Back to the meeting. The uh, World Cafe um, mm -hmm. on the 24th. Yep. So the 24th, we um, have extended invitations to... Um, individuals through the world for our world cafe model um, really around um, understanding and, and it was targeting individuals who are either new to our community or have been here forever or have um, have gone and come back um, really about understanding the culture and climate what is it that that makes up um, Painesville area schools and what is it um, kind of what are the things that are the the traditions and the things that are, um, that this is the way things are, and then what is the feel and the vibe, and how is that different for different groups of individuals, and different, um, whether you've been here forever or whether you're new to the community. Um, so having some of those those discussions. So I'm looking forward to um, hearing how that, the information that comes out of that session. So that'll be interesting. Any 
any other uh, meetings that everybody sees or not to make note of? None. Um, H, closed session. The Board of Education moved closed session to receive confidential legal advice regarding the pending grievance. Look for a motion. So move. Motion from Bruce. Second. Second from Megan. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Carried. 605.